It's official, the video gaming industry is going the way of Hollywood, where the talentless are promoted and those that have talent are ignored and pushed to the wayside. And this is what you can clearly see happening with the reemergence of rumors around a new Batman game being made by the Kill the Justice League team. If you don't know what Kill the Justice League team has done in the past, they have absolutely failed in creating a good game. And that's what you want when you're creating a game based around the Arkham Batman that had three times titles that had rocked the gaming industry with their massive success and appeal to gamers and now you're bringing in the people that dumped this massive failure onto the hands of the game player base and you're giving them Batman. A Batman they disrespected and mistreated in the Kill the Justice League game they just created and I think this is the thing that is angering the fan base when it comes to this new arrival of rumors surrounding the making of a Batman game around the Rocksteady team that just messed up Batman previously. And th these rumors are kind of scaring me personally because I, I really like the Batman Arkham series. To see the people that ruined the face of that Batman come back and try to grab hold of the entire legacy of that Batman, it is a fearful prospect if you actually enjoy that series of games. And this is the thing that we have to expect from the gaming industry when it comes to these treasured icons that they have in their property or possession where they inevitably ruined those properties and we saw this in Hollywood consistently throughout this past year alone where multiple projects were destroyed because of the interference of this ideology of erasing the past glory of these characters in place of a modern day audience bent of how these characters should be perceived. You can see this with Star Wars, Star Trek, Doctor Who, Marvel, all of these major properties were skewing the idea of what these heroes are supposed to be. And of course, subsequently, all of these properties have failed miserably. And now we're seeing the same thing happen in the video gaming industry where it's about destroying the idea of these characters rather than actually making an enjoyable game with a good story and I think this comes down to the talent vacuum we've been seeing in the video gaming industry recently and that lend this to this ideology of DEI where you're promoting people that do not have the skills to create games just based on their racial and gender preferences because you want to fill a quota you're introducing weak and talentless developers into a situation they may not even be concerned about contributing to because they don't like games they're just there because you offer them a job and they're going to take the job even though they suck at the job and that's just how people work so i don't have anything against those people but you're bringing in people that just don't know how to make games and you're depending on them to create something on the level of past games that you actually create and you can see the difference between the quality of games even just graphic wise when you go back to the arkham series the graphics are just so much superior than what we're getting from a modern day update of that world where everything looks just looks gray filtered and un characteristically ugly i think that's the thing we see from the overall quality drop from kill the justice league to the arkham series where we're just seeing things poorly designed poorly managed and poorly put together overall and that's what we see in total from this rocksteady team we see a complete downgrade from the quality of games that we used to get from rocksteady and i don't think we have the confidence that they could come back and produce something on the level of the old school arkham games and you're giving them that right to actually start again and produce those games so people are going to be hesitant on what we're actually going to be seeing from those games we're expecting something worse than ever because we still have the same minds that produced the slop we saw from Kill the Justice League producing this new Batman game. So it is a frightening detail, but even more frightening than that, we have to look at the consultancy firms that may take up and have influence on the development of this new Batman game. Sweet Baby Inc. is the progressive consultancy firm that has influenced multiple games into their disastrous doom. You can just look at Kill the Justice League itself, a game that released and lost Warner Brothers $200 million because it barely had a player base to play a perpetually on online game this is something that you need players to consistently play and the player number count clocked in averaging around 600 players for the past year so this is a massive failure of a game that was supposed to be bigger than it was supposed to be then you have consequently you have dustborn another sweet baby ink game that absolutely failed peaking at 98 players something very low of course 
can go to Concord, which is not all the way connected to Sweet Bay Bank, but it had the same design philosophy. And you saw the failure of that being the biggest flop for Sony Interactive Entertainment in history, losing them over $400 million. You can go on to Flintlock, which is another Sweet Baby Yank game that bombed upon its release, barely hovering around 100 players till dropping to zero. So this is the track record of Sweet Baby Yank, and these people are going to be coming back producing a Batman game. And this is the thing we don't want to see because they don't care about the characters. They don't care about the game players. They don't care about the dev team. They care about their political progress thoughts and ideologies reflected back into the game obviously that leads to disastrous results because we're getting multiple flops from sweet baby ink influence companies and this is what we want to avoid with batman we don't want to see this political progressive ideology pushed into our face we just want to play as batman we want to be a cool version of batman that is being a detective that is being an agent of good in a crazy chaotic society but now you're hiring people that see batman as a fascist and that's majorly the perspective on batman from the political progressives when it comes to his overall actions within gotham city they want to see joe they want to see Harley Quinn as the good guys because they themselves are those types of people that are willing to inflict massive amount of pain and hurt on other people to get what they want and this is the ideology that most game players don't have we want to see the good guy win we want to see the hero batman beat up the criminals send them to arkham we want to see him in tough situations and get out of those situations with his smarts with his ingenuity and talent but that is the thing that we fail to see in any of the games produced by sweet baby and consulted games companies we get the opposite we get invincible girl boss that has nothing Nothing to worry about because she was born with super talent and is able to do anything right because that's how women are in their mind perfect all their life and that is uncreative and not fun at all to play a character like that and you can see that majorly in a lot of the games that failed flintlock is that type of game where the character has no character where they're just some invincible lady that has a terrible attitude that is aggressive and annoying to be around why would i want to play as that character the same thing with concord they have this, a lot of the same aggressive annoying character traits where you're just like i don't want to be this character they're annoying same thing with dustborn specifically where you actively play a bully that has powers to bully influence and coerce people to do things they don't want to do and more than anything she's abusive to everyone around them and supposedly they're supposed to be a good character i like this is the absolutely trash writing that we're getting from the current team at rocksteady and just all over the video gaming industry the, the people that are producing games don't know how to make something endearing charming and reflective to the people that are actually playing the games anymore they're producing content that is irredeemable where people can't connect with those characters people can't identify with those characters and ultimately there's nothing to relate to because the people that we're playing as are absolutely horrible but that's just my perspective on the vacuum of talent in the video gaming industry and the new trend of the talentless failing upwards this is much similar to a hollywood situation but it only can be done in a few places it can't be done everywhere because Everywhere else is not Warner Brothers. Everywhere else is not Microsoft. There at Microsoft, you can fail up because the games division is not the major part of the company. So they allow those talentless people to fail upwards. And I think Warner Brothers is doing the same thing here with the Rocksteady crew. But I think even they are on a short leash. Once they mess up Batman, which they will, they're not going to change their ideology because they're going to lose their job. They don't care about their job. They're there to influence the gamers and their job means nothing nothing to them and i think that is the result that we're gonna see with this new batman where we're gonna get everything from batman it's gonna be lgbtq characters it's gonna be black Lives matters references there's gonna be everything that you expect from these modern gaming devs that absolutely tank a video game nowadays but that's just what we have to expect and unfortunately we're not going to get anything better if another batman is coming from rocksteady but those are just my two cents on the situation you tell me what you think like comment share subscribe this is wagner knows why catch you next time